Nothing matched my father's memories or my grandmother's stories. Not the architecture, not the language, not even the food. I stopped referring to myself as Ukrainian because that only confused people. Instead, I learned to describe myself in both Ukrainian and English as simply diaspora, which is how others in Ukraine referred to me. As I walked the wide, leafy boulevards of Kiev, I could feel the proper boundaries of skin and identity eroding. I was becoming a diasporic subject, something between East and West, something that would either never belong in either or would always long for one or the other. Sarah Ahmed describes the space in between homes as a space of belonging. A new genera generation of anti-globalization and anti-war activists call transnational communities home. For many Canadian youth, an ironic appreciation of myth, still rooted in consumption, takes the place of overt displays of nationalism. Origin has become in Heimlich, and destination is always unstable. Home represents an impossible yet yearned for future rather than a stable past. As I traveled by train and bus through the scarred social and geographic landscape of Ukraine, I wondered if my elders' recollections of the old country had been mere projection. Where were the lush green steppes and hallowed birch groves we had sung about as children? National narratives, as I argued earlier, compensate for the failure of individual memory. National narratives become undone in the space in between. I've come to the conclusion that the ethical becoming of mourning or of working through occurs across media. In an age of convergence, television can no longer be spoken of in isolation from other media. Audiences develop their own latent forms of media interactivity and meaning making that creators of these media may never have envisioned, like tweeting as a way to organize political demonstrations. Repost, commentary, humor, scathing critique, all are available on the internet, rabble.ca, Znet, Frontlines, even YouTube. On the CBC News World program Inside Media, a black campus radio host says his ethnic audiences shun CBC TV, not necessarily because of racism, but because of what he calls its polite Anglo sound. He considers Radio 3, CBC's youth-oriented online presence, to be a much cooler and culturally diverse location. Such sites collude with the latest in digital consumption, laptop computers, scanners, CD, DVD burners, BitTorrent downloads, cell phone text messaging systems, social networking sites, blogging programs, I could go on, and I do. Nonetheless, Beatty and Sullivan posit some interesting effective flows from new technologies when they write, quote, the face of television is changing from the classical model in which images fly from the screen to a mass audience. In its place is a model that finds the flow originating with the audience itself as they deftly manipulate the fullest medians, me, limits of the medium and adapt to their needs. This mastery of scheduling, format, and site of reception unique to audiences of digital media opens up new possibilities for affect to circulate among bodies as audiences share digital downloads in sites less vulnerable to government regulation or corporate influence. Canadian television becomes more fluid, more interactive, at the borders of media. A Mols the Molson's website bulletin board is an unwitting site of resistance, as when an anonymous writer declaims in response to Joe Canadian's rant, I want my identity back, because my country's identity has sold its soul to corporate power, because consumerism and beer and consumption has become our national religion, because we have forgotten the true meaning of being Canadian, and because Canadian now means a beer. I am not a demographic. I am not a consumer. I am who I am, and I am not a beer. <laughs> 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 